John 13, 31 to 38. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, Where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. John 13, 31 to 38. God bless the reading of his word. It is the Last Supper. Jesus thinks that he will be with his followers only a little while longer. He is about to glorify God in his life. He knows that somehow that this will involve him dying. He also knows that he's going to start a new way of doing things for God's people. Old Testament Israel did not live up to what God had called Israel to do. Israel failed to be a light to all the nations of the world. Now, with God's blessings, Jesus calls God's followers to a new way of doing things. He gives them a new commandment. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. John 13, 34 to 35. God's new people will not be marked by the observation of holy days and temple sacrifices. They will not have a controlling Jerusalem temple leadership. They will not have those restrictive food practices. Instead, this new community will be marked by love. In particular, love for one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. However, there are going to be challenges for Jesus. Someone is going to betray him. In the earlier part of John 13, the story of Judas is told. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. John 13 verse 21. They asked Jesus, Who will betray him? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. John 13, 26-27 The other followers of Jesus do not know this. Satan enters Judas. Judas proceeds to go to the leaders of the Jerusalem temple and betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. If one of his disciples, Judas, is about to betray him, how can Jesus talk about loving one another to his disciples? There is also someone who will let Jesus down. Jesus tells them that he is about to go to some place where they cannot follow him to. Peter wants to follow Jesus there. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. John 13, 37 to 38. Peter is about to deny Jesus three times. Judas is about to betray Jesus. How can Jesus talk about loving one another? By talking about the new command to love one another, I believe that Jesus is referring to a basic human need. We are all human beings who search for love and acceptance. 
God has created us with this need for love and acceptance. In 1967, the Beatles released the song, All You Need Is Love, which eventually featured on their 1968 Magical Mystery Tour album. I believe it explains this human need for love and acceptance. The Beatles sang that the best things in life are possible when you have love. Here are some of the words of the song. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can say but you can learn how to play the game. It's easy. Nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. Now, I love the Beatles and their songs. I also agree with them that love is a basic human need. We are all searching for love and acceptance. They say that everything is possible with love. Is this true? What is love? They also say that love is easy to share. Is love truly easy to share? When the Beatles released All You Need Is Love, they were three years from their final breakup in 1970. Jesus announces that the new language of his followers is love for one another. However, we know that it is also on that night that Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and Peter denies Jesus three times. Is Jesus truly loved by Judas and Peter? As soon as Judas leaves the room to betray Jesus, Jesus tells them that now he, the Son of Man, is glorified, and God is glorified in him. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. John 13, 31 to 32. How can Jesus say that he is now glorified when Judas leaves the room to betray him? How can Judas' betrayal lead to Jesus being glorified? The answer lies in Jesus' earlier words in John 12. There are some Greek-speaking people who visit the Passover festival. In the Bible, when people are known as Greek-speaking, this means that they are non-Jews. These Greek-speaking group tell Jesus' followers that they have come to see Jesus. Jesus sees this as a confirmation from God that his mission now includes Greek-speaking non-Jews as well as the Jewish-speaking people. Jews and non-Jews now seek Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. John 12, 23 to 24. A grain of wheat falls. Jesus now makes it clear that his mission is to be that grain of wheat that falls. Unless it falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But when it dies, it produces many seeds. This is an image of Jesus dying on the cross. When Jesus is nailed to the cross, he becomes the grain of wheat that, which, who falls to the ground and dies. This act produces many seeds. Jesus suspects that this Passover meal is indeed the Last Supper before the journey to the cross. This will be the last meal with his followers. Jesus also has some understanding that Judas is about to betray him. Earlier after the meal, but before his conversation with Judas, Jesus does something very strange. He washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. John 13 verse 1. This is the night before the cross. Jesus loves his followers to the end. He washes their feet as a symbol of his love for them. 
After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with towel that was wrapped round him. John 13, verse 5. Jesus washes the feet of Bartholomew. Jesus washes the feet of James, son of Alphaeus. Jesus washes the feet of Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Jesus washes the feet of John and his brother James, the sons of thunder, or the sons of Zebedee. Jesus washes the feet of Thomas, who will doubt him. Jesus washes the feet of Philip. Jesus washes the feet of Matthew, the tax collector. Jesus washes the feet of Thaddeus. Jesus washes the feet of Simon, the zealot. Jesus washes the feet of Judas Iscariot, who will betray him for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus washes the feet of Simon Peter, who will deny him three times in the courtyard. Jesus washes the feet of all his 12 disciples. Jesus washes all their feet. By going to the cross, Jesus washes my feet. By going to the cross, Jesus washes your feet. By going to the cross, Jesus washes all our feet. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. John 13 verse 34. We love because he first loved us. 1 John 4 verse 19. God loves us before we can love each other. Without God showing his love to us, we do not know how to love. Through Jesus Christ, God had shown the infinite extent of his love for us. He pours out his love on us through Jesus Christ. We are people who belong to Christ. We are called Christians. When we show others love, we show forth the love of Jesus Christ. We love because Jesus first loved us. In March 2018, a lone gunman took several people hostage in a French supermarket. Arnold Bertram, um, a French police officer, offered to trade places with the hostage during the standoff. Because of his action, the hostage lived, but the officer died. A spokesman for French President Emmanuel Macron said that Bertrand died in the service of the nation to which he had already brought so much. By giving his life to put an end to the terrorists, he had fallen as a hero. Father John Baptiste, a Roman Catholic priest, wrote this of Officer Arnold. It seems to me that only his faith can explain the madness of this sacrifice, which is today the admiration of all. He understood, as Jesus told us, that there is no greater love than to give one's life for one's friend. John 15 verse 13. He knew that if his life belonged to his wife, Mariel, it also belonged to God, to France, and to his brothers in danger of death. I believe that only a Christian faith animated by charity could ask for this superhuman sacrifice. I believe that only a Christian faith animated by charity or by love could ask for this superhuman sacrifice. As we go on through life, we encounter difficult people. These people make life difficult for us. Sometimes we wonder if we could love them as Jesus commanded us to do. Through Jesus, God loves us with a superhuman love. We love because God first loved us through Jesus. God loves people first through Jesus Christ before we can love them. We can love other people because God first loved us through Jesus Christ. Amen.